Welcome back to another video in our Basics of Glide series. Now, in the previous video, we took a little bit of a look at databases and how we can set that data up. Now in this one, we're going to look at how we can show that data on various UI and UX components and just start to bring our workout app here to life. So, a couple of things just to note about Glide. Clearly, it is based entirely on how mobile apps look and you've got lots of components um, from mobile apps. One thing that I, I did mention before is almost everything you build in Glide is going to start out as some form of list. If you look down on the right here, it does have various kind of styles of list like a tile, a checklist, cards, swipe, which is kind of um, almost kind of Tinder style. Uh, you've got details, etc. If you do go into details, then uh, in theory, you can kind of escape that list kind of view. But you can see essentially it has just listed out all the various different pieces of data that I've got if I do that. But I'm going to stick with the original list style. Oh, and by the way, when you do use calendar and maps, essentially what they are doing is just listing all of your um, uh, all of your pieces of data on a map. So it doesn't seem like a list. Technically it is though. Anyway, um, yeah, when we start out here, you kind of have a, a couple of options. You know, on the right, you can start to configure this menu and it says things at the top. You know, I can change that to say workouts, for example. I can change that label. If you pop into options, you can change kind of the visibility. So when should this show up? When should it not? Now, one of the words that said there is set conditions for when the tab should be visible. And that's going to bring me on to the left-hand side. So at the minute, we're just looking at one screen. And if I click that, I kind of get, you know, uh, the hamburger menu is going to open up a navigation menu. Um, over on the left here, I have this ability to either add new screens, which I'm not going to do just yet, um, or I can go back to my workout, or I have this shopping cart and this chat, which I can enable. If I hit that, then immediately this little tab bar is now going to appear at the bottom. If I start to add the other tabs, then it's just going to give me more and more icons for them. Um, and the reason for this is uh, Glide does support e-commerce, which is why I've got a shopping cart. It's disabled by default, and I'm going to keep it that way because that's not the focus of this video. Um, it also has chat, which um, quite simply is, is kind of almost like a live chat or a private messaging built in um, as well by default. Again, I'll disable that, but it's a fun one for you to play around with. And I'll also disable uh, that new tab. So if we go back to our workouts where, where we're looking at, now we've got this list view. Immediately it's set up the source. If I hit edit list, then I get all these options um, and a lot more detail around about how this page should look, how the data should show up. Because I've messed around with the style of the list, obviously it's pulled in some of the data. But if you look down here, um, we kind of have these different uh, fields that are available to decide, you know, what's going to show up on the, um, on the, I guess, on the each kind of individual list item here. Um, and you can play around with the kind of visuals. So, you know, I can play with the sizing clearly. Um, I can start to hide things. Like if I don't want a, an image, I can just do that. Uh, and that will um, kind of get rid of an image, or if I had one in there, I could bring it in. If I wanted to get rid of some of the extra data that's showing up there, I can get rid of that, and it will just simplify it right down. And you'll see the list kind of changes and reflects how it looks as I go along. Um, you've also got various options here. Now, this is where you get into a lot more detail around about filtering, for example, sorting. Um, so I could filter out, you know, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know, like, uh, let's say, um, workouts from a certain day. I could sort them by uh, the, the earliest date, for example. You also have this part that says add form. Come back to that in a little second. Um, but coming back to our list, you... You can also have this concept of actions, and we're going to explore that in the the next video. But essentially, whenever you click an item on this list, an action is going to take place. The default one is almost always going to happen on a list as view details, which essentially says, well, when I click that, I want to go in and get more details about that. Now, all it's doing at the minute is bringing through the... Um, uh, one of the variables, which is the owner email, and it's obviously given that, you know, the ability to actually click and, and, and send an email to that user, which is one of the things, by the way, that I quite like about Glide. A lot of just cool functionality is done for you. But, you know, let's just play around with kind of editing this a little bit. We'll hit edit list. Um, let's say we want to show the date uh, that the workout happened. So we can say, all right, it was chest day, etc., legs day, um, so on and so forth. We don't really need a huge amount more information in there, but you know, we can play around with the caption. We could add, for example, um, the uh, first exercise, whatever it might be. And this is where, you know, when you're starting to think about your layout and Glide, it might be worth thinking, you know, what kind of variables do you want? You know, maybe, for example, you could have something that counted up every single rep that you have um, in there and save that as a new data field and then display that. So you could say, okay, well, 
you know, chess day today and the 7th of April was actually, I don't know, um, you know, 100 reps in total or something like that. It's just an example of how you can kind of play around with the data. But where things really start to get interesting, you know, if I look on the left, I kind of have this bit that says screen and it's got this little plus sign and it says, for now, you can only add a component and a details view. Um, so where things start to get really interesting is when I click into details, because when you kind of look at that, you go, that's pretty limited. Okay, you can switch to map and all that kind of thing. But when I click this plus button in the details page, suddenly you've got more components than you can shake a proverbial stick at, whatever that actually means. And um, we've got all sorts of stuff here. So we've got various different types of text. We've got various things that will let us do layouts, you know, separators, titles, etc. We can embed media like audio, maps, video, web view. Um, and then we have all these sorts of different types of buttons that each look a little bit different or do something different. You know, if you wanted to do a phone number, you've got that component there. Um, you know, if you wanted to link into another screen, you can do that. If you wanted to switch, you know, buttons, so on, so forth. Um, we can clearly include repeating data lists in here, as you would expect. Uh, we can allow the user to pick things like they can upload a file, they can put an image in. And so, you know, when you look at this, you can see, okay, Glide kind of goes from being something that feels quite playful, you know, almost like a very, very beginner's no-code tool, into being something that is uber-powerful, you know, into being something that can suddenly do a lot of stuff. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting to note here is these entry fields. So these entry fields will let you take some pretty specific stuff, like if you want to edit an email address, um, if you want to put uh, you know, the current address in, um, if you want to take notes, you can even do a stopwatch, which is pretty cool as well, especially if you're doing a workout app, you know, you could have something in there, um, you just drag that in immediately and it's going to start, um, you know, letting you kind of count the time, etc. And you can even say, you can either set a duration, so you could actually have your duration set in your database, um, or, uh, you know, you can capture that almost. So if we hit delete on that anyway, let's crack on with what we're doing. So I'm going to delete the stuff that we've got on this page and um, we'll start from scratch. So the title uh, we've already got on there, you can set that based on, um, for, I mean, you could do anything here. You could do like the uh, the owner or whatever. You could do like if the workout had a name, etc. I'll put the date there just to kind of keep the um, using the date that we've got. And then if I scroll down a little bit and see what else we've got in here, essentially what I can do is um, I can pick a piece of text, let's say, first of all, and um, I can bring that in here. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull, it's going to let me essentially set up a variable. You know, I can write something custom. I could write, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but when I click this little menu here, I essentially have access to all the different variables that I can grab through my database. And you'll notice down the bottom here as well, I can grab the current user's details. This will always be the logged in user. If, you, if you've if you used Adalo before and you've seen its logged in user menu, this right here is the same thing. Um, but essentially over here, I can, uh, for example, you know, we could pick our different exercises that we want to do. So we could say, all right, exercise A. Uh, a, um, and you can change the type, you know, you could just say first exercise, um, and obviously you can do stuff here, like you can trim the text and all that kind of thing, it doesn't really matter for us because we don't have text that that's long, you can set your visibility again, but we're just going to put, since we're building a workout app, we're going to put our first exercise in, um, we can copy that, if you just hit this button here, it'll just copy it a couple of times, so now I can go in, I can edit those details, I can say, alright, what's the second exercise of the day, I can change that data type to B, um, Oh, I've changed that in the wrong one. That was a bit daft. Let me move them around. Uh, oops. Move them around there. There you go. Um, and then we can do the third exercise. You're better selecting it on the side here because the thing you might often forget is if you look down the bottom right-hand corner, you've got select mode and play mode. Play mode will let you use the app as if you're actually using it, whereas select mode is what you actually need to select between different elements. It's a really, really easy mistake to make because you're always switching between them. I'm not 100% sure if there's a keyboard shortcut for that. It's something I have to check out. Um, we'll set this now to exercise C uh, and we'll do that to last exercise. So really easily there, we've started to display our data in a way that is actually useful. You know, you could also do stuff like you could have images, for example, to show what the workout uh, does. And you could, you know, drag an image field. Oops. You could drag an image field in there. Uh, you could either fill that out of your database, you know, by using the data here. Um, you could grab that from a URL as well if you wanted to go and put something in. I'll leave that for now. Um, but again, you've just got tons of options. I, I, I always... 
feel that Glide is really sophisticated under the hood in a way that you don't you don't kind of foresee. Um, now, when we hit plus, uh, a few other things we could do. We could have a button here, you know, for example, you could say something like, um, you know, save workout, whatever you wanted to do. You can then have that uh, start and action clearly. You can also pick various different types of buttons. Um, and again, all that styling is just kind of done for you. When I hit float in there, you can see it disappears down to the bottom. Um, and then you can pick icons if you like. You just save workout. You could do, I don't know, I'm not sure that's quite the right icon, but it just gives you an idea of um, how quickly you can flex around some of this stuff. You can move stuff up and down, um, you know, play around with it. But I think the one thing that, that is worth mentioning is clearly Glide is trying to make sure not only that you build an app, but that you build a good looking app. So, you know, compared to some of its uh, competing tools, it's not really going to let you drag stuff around to wherever you want. It's going to try and keep it feeling like a real Apple app or a real Android app. I personally think that's a good thing. You know, I think if you're really focused on the value of your app and the functionality, and if the design is, you know, less important for you, maybe more of a hygiene factor where it's like you don't have a particularly unique design, you just know you want it to look good, Glide is really, really great for that. If you want something really unique, high-flying, different, Glide might not be the tool for you. You might want something like Bravo Studio, for example. Um, but... You know, it's a it's a really good tool just for keeping everything looking nice and neat. And if you're wondering why it's green and where the options are to change colours, again, if you pop up to this right-hand menu, um, kind of like I demonstrated an overview, you can change the theme. Um, so have a look on the left at how things change as I click that. You make it dark, uh, you can change it around with the colours. And then for the actual accent colour itself, you can go red, for example. That's a bit garish. You can go blue... Uh, you can go purple and so on and so forth. I'm going to keep it as a green. I quite like that. Um, you can also change around the different fonts here. So, um, you know, that might be something that fits, a, you know, a certain style. Uh, you've got modern there. Um, you've got something a little bit more kind of, a bit more space between the characters, etc. Um, then you've got system, which if I remember is just kind of using the default Apple or Android font. Um, and again, where you've got it here to say kind of match devices theme, this will automatically style itself to match um, how you know how the users got their phone set up. So I guess if they had it in dark mode, for example, it's going to look like that rather than that. But if you want to, you know, force it into dark mode even when they've got it in light mode, you can specify that as well. You increase contrast if you want to, various other little bits and pieces, and of course, if you're doing tablet, then you've got various different tablet options too. A lot of that's hidden under Glide's. Um, kind of pro functionality, uh, you know, if you're doing an app that, that that's kind of, you know, making any money at all or adding value to your business, it's pretty cheap, highly, highly recommend doing that. So we'll stop mucking around with the UI and UX for now. Um, what we're going to do on the next video is look at how we can start to move data around about Glide, how we can have the user, for example, enter their reps. That will also involve um, kind of, I guess, form entry elements of the, uh, of the UI and UX as well, but we'll be more starting to move into workflows, you know, how do you save data, how do you work with it, how do you do stuff with it, and we'll pick up from there.